We're going to keep the conversation going right now. Welcome in Dan Heyman. He's the boys cross country coach over at Mainland. Morning, Coach. Hey, how you doing, Zoe? Got the windows rolled up in the bus so we can hear you? <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm curled up in a little fetal ball so that you block out some of the sound. I want to bleed everybody's ears at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first of all, congratulations on, on last night getting in, inducted into the Mainland Hall of Fame uh, with those 2002-2003 teams. Uh, okay. much, much deserved honor for sure. You've been at it for about a quarter century here. Yeah, I have. I know. I'm starting to, the, crack, the, the, the cracks are starting to show. You know, <laughs> that's a great, that's a tremendous group of guys. It was great to have the entire team back last night and, and have them meet a couple of the, the this year guys too while we were at it. It was a special night, great time. Well, apparently you're pretty popular because when I posted posted up your photo on our Facebook page uh, to kind of promote the show, it was getting all kind of comments and shares and likes. Did, did you realize you were that popular? No, I have to. Say, you know, I don't. Do the Facebook for the team. Or, <laughs> so my wife told me there was a bunch of people that are doing that. You know, I've, I've been lucky. I've got just, just wonderful families that support this program over the years. <laughs> and uh, I'm in touch with a lot of them, like, just not on Facebook. And, and last night was like a, like almost like a high school reunion for me, seeing the kids and the parents and everything else. But even the, the, the current families and, and the staff, it's just something that makes everything special for this program. Uh, it, I, I, I'm not surprised that people would. Would, would do something like that, but you know, uh, I'm going to have to check it out now. Though I want to get on there. I wait for Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got to be uh, kind of interesting. Last night, I mean, you see all those guys again, and they're uh, 15 years out of high school, so they they all you know they got their own families and their own careers and all that stuff. And how neat is that as a high school coach to to see those things unfold after you coach these guys? It, it's tremendous, and and to see how they turn out in their lives. At my at my bank, when I say this to the, the teams every year, the things they learn. As high school athletes, uh, you know, the, the, the hard work, the perseverance, and for runners, the mental toughness, they take that every part of their lives. And, and I see that coming out year after year, these guys that, that dedicate themselves to something tough like cross country where you don't always get a lot of ink or a lot of, not a lot of people understand it and they don't know what goes into it. And, and to see those guys years down the road succeeding in, in whatever they do, uh, I see a little bit of that in this year's team too. So it's, it's, it's really special. Yeah, perfect segue there. Uh, this year's team it might be one to remember in, in 10, 15 years. you got the Ansac boys, uh, Mick and Arthur, some some really good, solid runners there. Yeah, we had um, a very good good year last year. We were just three points out of winning the sectional meet. I know that stung a little bit, but they, they bounced back last year and got six in the state meet. And with those guys back from there, we're just trying to fill out our hand and get some depth. That's the one thing we seem to be missing right now. We, we have a couple dudes fighting it out for that that five, six spot, seven spot to just try to make us complete. Last year we were we were deeper, but we have half of them back, and they're they're getting better every year. So we're just trying to you know fill out a whole hand because you need you need five five or more to, to battle in the, in the end of the season. Talking with Coach Dan Heyman, Mainland Regional Boys Cross Country Coach, and uh, Coach, take me back to Tuesday it was a huge day in the history of your program, uh, beating Ocean City and, and stopping their ninety three in a row dual meet streak. Uh, what a moment for these kids. I mean, they, they probably thought they were going to go the whole, their whole career without beating Ocean City because Ocean City hadn't lost a dual meet in 10 years. Yeah, for young guys, yeah, you don't want them to come, come to accept it. You know, it would have been nice if someone else had stepped up to the plate for us in the 10 years, but we had to be the ones to come back and do it. We, we felt like we dropped the ball a little bit last year. We didn't have our greatest race against them, but we don't really focus on the early season meets as much as the postseason. So we take what we can. We thought we had one last year, but the streak kept on going. So this year, you know, we, we, we didn't change our approach. We're still looking at the end of the year, focusing, and we're saying, hey, whatever happened to the dual meet in September, you know, so be it. But, it, you know, they, 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 didn't, they didn't have their best race, but they ran well enough to beat them, and, and they're real happy about that. That's the thing, you know. To, to know that you have more to give and to still pull it off, that is going to be special for them. I mean, these guys are only, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old. They probably don't understand um... – how impressive that streak was for Ocean City. I mean, you're talking a 10-year streak without a loss in the in the Cape Atlantic League, and you know that's you're talking up there with you know kind of the programs like CBA and and even the mainland teams you you had back in the 90s. Yeah, um, yeah, I would, I would, I would say somewhat. Yeah, that, that, that Ocean City's a great program, and they've had they've had some of their better years uh, even before that streak. Um, but the dual meet thing, yeah, it's it's. The league became a little top heavy, and I think they went on a nice run there. They had a they had a, a great feeder program and a lot of a lot of good guys going through there. And they're and they have numbers. They're really deep. So you know, I, we know they're going to be back 
even more next year. So, you know, to get one now, we're, we're happy about it. But, you know, we, we still take this one. These guys, we, we take approach of probably a lot of football teams say, you know, we, we've we got to forget about it already. So it's something that we'll look at maybe <laughs> at the end of the year to banquet. We picked up a win there, and it was nice to stop their streak and things like that. But, but we, we can't let up now. We got we know we have to run better than that to, to achieve our goals at sectionals and, and the state meet. Like last year, they when they didn't beat them and the tear streak continued, we came back really strong, uh, and, and we went on a tear, winning the, 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 the Cape Atlantic League meet and played some high in sectionals and really high in state. And we want that to happen again. So they're, they're still looking forward. Uh, I know we'll talk about it at the end of the year sometime. You know, I'll talk about it a little bit today because it is, it's always nice to stop something to somebody else's. But we really want to keep you, and we, we want the bigger stuff that, that, on the big stage. But locally, a lot of people only follow the dual meets, so it's nice for us to at least get noted there, you know? So if people around here don't follow it much. They can say, hey, they beat Ocean City. That's a big deal for them for that. And also, uh, congrats, it was your 200th career victory, and, and that's not an easy thing to do in cross country where you only have maybe nine or ten meets the entire season, uh, not like a, a sport like basketball where you're playing 25 games a year. Uh, what does that say about this program and, and – you know, you and your coaching staff's ability to really keep it strong throughout the years. That's the thing. I mean, it's, it, 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 it makes me so proud of all the guys that have come through this program. To knock that many out, you know, it, I know it's been like a 23-year, 24-year span, but like you said, you know, that's only counting the dual meets. So to knock out 200, it makes it reminds me of all those guys that went into that, including those guys. I, I blurted it out literally 20 seconds before the starting line because I didn't <laughs> want to, to, you know, to get really that amped up over a dual meet. So I'm like, Listen, guys, you know, hey, oh, hey, by the way, if you win today, it's 200. All right, great. And then by the time we got done the meet, a dark cloud came over us and started like bolts of lightning were coming down. So maybe <laughs> we should have waited a week to do it. <laughs> Coach, where are the guys at right now? I mean, obviously you're building towards that October championship season and you, you kind of take it in increments. Uh, how strong are these guys feeling and looking now? Well, um, we've been beating them pretty hard. They've been, you know, they're working hard through this month, really hard. That's what I mean about the, how we have to take what we can get in that dual meet. They're, they're training at a really high level now. Um, they're not laying up for anything. So they've been running some of these races on tired legs. And we're, as I speak to you, we're, we just ran Gammy's course to prepare for a dual meet on Tuesday, you know, just so we know where we're going, because you never know if you're going to have a guy in the front that's like having an Anzac. He's gonna, he might be in the front of the race at some point. you got to know where you're going. So we went and scouted that course, ran a couple miles there. Now we're on the parkway, and we're heading up to Homedale, and we're going to run that course a bunch of times. <laughs> So they're going to have a, a, a double-digit running day, which seems to be happening often this time of year. We're not, like, letting up too much. So they're doing a lot of hard workouts, just training through these early season races. And then when we get near the end of the year, then we'll, then we'll start worrying about, you know, resting and peaking for, for, the, for November. And that's still a long ways off. So, you know, they're just building, building. So, you know, we, we, were, we celebrated that dual meet win for about that eight minutes before the lightning came down. And then it's like, hey, back to work. We would have stretched it out a good half hour or so, but <laughs> the weather didn't let it happen. So it's back, just back to work. You know, keep chopping wood, like I used to say. Well, Coach, give these guys a day off tomorrow. they got homework to do. Yeah, there you go. Maybe they'll <laughs> run a little bit as part of their homework. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, we appreciate the time, man, and uh, always great talking to you about cross country. Congratulations on the, uh, the win and the Hall of Fame and all that stuff, and we'll catch up with you later in the season. Thank you so much, sir. All right, have a good weekend, bud. You too, man. Thanks. Bye. That was uh, Dan Heyman, Mainland Boys, Re Boy Mainland Regional Boys Cross Country Coach.